What's up everybody, here we are, Combo Breaker 2022 is going to be soon underway. The doctor is in, that's me. I am here today with Brad Muse and David Casa Bunch. And they are going to be discussing what they believe are the most interesting pools of Street Fighter V here at this weekend's event. So let's get their thoughts here. We're going to be asking Brad very shortly on what Pool A is shaping up to be. Yeah, so I think when we're looking at Pool A, uh, one of these pools has Punk and Chris G in it. Obviously two killers, two people you expect to see super deep in every bracket. Opposite seed in that pool which to me is interesting because as I look forward immediately past pool stages, it means if they do both come out in winners as they are favorited to do, they end up playing each other in top 96, which is a really early place in the tournament for them to play against each other. So any upset against either of them makes for a really interesting bracket down the line, or if they both get through, only one of them ends up in winners in the long run, uh, which is similarly interesting. Right. So we saw that when they played back in CEO 2021, mm. it was... Um it was very convincing for for <laughs> for Punk's Claw. Um, he played Claw, right? Yeah, the he played time? he played Claw. Yeah. Uh, Punk didn't switch off of Claw until he played against Mono in Winners and Grands. I think he pulled out Cami for one game in Winners, and then, and then, and then Karen in, in yeah. Grands. So so the the one thing that that Chris is probably um, gonna have to figure out if they are to make it that far, because you know there's there's still a lot of People that yeah, could, sure. that are in their way. I don't I don't want to discredit any sure, of these sure. players, but um, the, the the likelihood of those two are, are making making it to, to top ninety six to face each other is probably very high. Um, Chris Chris has to show us something different. Um, yeah, I I appreciate that he's you know he he's always a guy that only plays what he wants to play. So I I really appreciate that as as like as a player that has um always wanted to chase that idea of playing a, a, a character that they enjoy and only right. what they enjoy and performing at a high level is very very um very admirable so um i hope i hope chris brings us something different again it's a new patch yeah yeah um i'm not exactly sure what akira got this this patch i didn't i didn't really look at at, at her yeah at her yeah. kit before and after but um, I haven't heard anything terrible about the character. Sure, but so that's interesting, right? You talk about the new patch, you talk about playing the character you love, and that's interesting because you also played Karen, the character that yeah. Punk really made a name for himself with yeah. in this title. And like you said, played Claw, played Cammy, uh, represented. We've seen Chun come out of Punk, and I know Ken. this season we've seen a lot of Ken. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether Ken is sort of the character that has stuck, but the point being is that Punk has a lot of these characters to lean on and leverage. And I think one of the things that really made that matchup difficult when it was Claw versus Akira was the interaction in the shimmy where Akira's low forward just could not generate threat at a range that Claw had to worry about. Mm -hmm. So Punk was able to play at a range where his shimmies were also super effective spacing traps. Right. If Punk plays one of these other characters, that element of the game isn't there. Suddenly Akira's low forward and walk speed matter a little bit more. And if Punk represents the Karen, obviously that low forward was nerfed. Right. Well, the one the one thing that you can gar guarantee from Punk is that he's gonna bring a character with high walk speed. Yeah. Because um, he he and I share a similar uh, play style where we we definitely wanna play characters that feed into uh, playing neutral. Mm -hmm. So um, if there's anything you can you can give us the wackest buttons on earth, but the, if the walk speed is amazing, sure. like like a Kage. Mm. We're gonna shine, you know. Right. A player like Punk, he's gonna shine no matter you know what character he picks. Like, like I know he he's been picking uh, Ryu also. Okay. So that character doesn't have the best buttons on earth, but he's got mobility. He's got a fantastic dash, and he's he's got the 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 V the V system attributes to make anything possible. I don't. I can't call what what Punk is gonna bring. Yeah. I can't see him going past. Ken or Vega for that matchup, but it's going to be something to watch. Yeah, it's always the interesting thing. The only thing that I ever know for sure about Punk is that whatever character he's picking, he's going to be the pink costume. Absolutely. It's the only thing you can know. So you guys are talking about Punk versus Chris. Yeah. But you also didn't want to disrespect the other players in this pool. Absolutely. So who else are you potentially dark horsing or think that, you know, is going to be challenging the two favorites? The, the, the two dark horses for sure, for sure, is definitely Maureen. Um, her, 
her breakout performance was actually at Combo Breaker. I can't remember if it was 18 or 19 where she defeated Dogra um, on stage with the Laura. I know she's been a Laura loyalist since like day one. So I can't see her going straying away from that character in any sense. Um, another dark horse would be Boomy. He's a he's an online Zeku player. We haven't seen a lot of him offline, so it's it's gonna it's gonna be great to see him do something, you know, in in that realm. And then also is Deanthrax. Um great player, great um, fundamentals. He's He's been a little down on himself mentally, but I think if, if he can get past those those um, self hurdles, he could actually make something happen. Like he's on he's on Punk side of the bracket. Yeah, I've played him personally, and the the minute that I tried to like pull up pull uh, pull up off the off the gas, he checked my 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 game right there. So it's like it can happen. Uh, you know, a fundamental player. He knows what he needs to do. So I hope he brings it this this weekend. Yeah, and I mean, you you talk about uh, Deanthrax, also Boomy, both on Punk's side of the bracket, yeah. Marine on Chris G's side of the bracket, yeah. and again, if we start to look forward to like what are some of the potential top ninety six matchups, mm -hmm. you know, the determination for that, if we go by these favorites and dark horses on this side of the bracket, it's Chris G versus Marine, and Boomy and Deanthrax actually play one another if they each win their first game. Yeah. So first and foremost, Boomy and Deanthrax. Yeah. What do you think? Um, like I said, it's all contingent on how mentally strong Deanthrax decides to be this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of faith in him. I, I've talked to him as like friend to friend, player to player. I think he has great potential. He just okay. needs to get out of his own way. Um, I've played Boomy. <laughs> Again, great competitor. I haven't seen him deal with the offline setting, so I can't speak on how he's going to deal. Because we know that online and offline are yeah, different beasts. Sure. So I just I just want to give Boomy a chance to experience this. I, he could also just be a seasoned vet I've never ran into. So, like I said... I hope to see something great from both of those players. This this pool, honestly, because all uh, six players make it out. Yes. I I guarantee. I guarantee. I'm saying right now. I guarantee all the seated players that we're talking about right now are gonna make it out. Okay. Either winners or losers, no matter what. Huh. That is definitely a bold statement to be coming out this early on. I feel, but that's just pool A. Yeah. We still have more. There's pool B, which also has. Uh, you know, a bit of bias in it, per se, considering the three of us may come from uh, New England. So talk to me a little about Pool B. Whoa there. <laughs> Whoa there, oh, fella. okay. Whoa there, fella. Sorry, um, whose car did we show up in? Whoa oh, there, fella. Alright, so... There's a little bit of bias. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna kick off Pool B with, with straight bias. Um... Well, what, why don't you tell them about the path, how, how things are going to break out in case in case things go? Or With respect to... To, like... Or did you not get to look at the 96? To, uh, not for this one, no. Oh, okay, but, then, uh, then, then, then let, let's, let's, let's cut to the brass tacks. <laughs> so, listen. Listen. I'm just going to read off, read off the seeds right now. <laughs> NYC Furby. Mm. Hizzle the bad guy. Nice one. You might not know him, but we're going to speak about him in a second. Kudo all the way from Japan, New York transplant, so we claim him. And last but not least. Are you allowed to do that? Yes. Last but not least, New England's own, all the way from Brockton. We got to give it up for my son, Nelbaum. Nelbaum, I first played him in 2017 uh, Rebel back in the castle mm. in New England. That was a good event. Um... And he, um, you know, he he was he he was the average new player, you know. Right. Um, the the beauty of it was when I finally moved to to New England in uh, in 2018, I got to see his growth. Yeah. So from the level that I re remember him from in 2017, I got to see what he's been doing since last weekend. Yeah. And I gotta say, he's he's ready to have his breakout event. Oh yeah. Um, he showed us a, a little glimmer of that when he made top twenty four at uh, 
as CEO. Yeah, and, and that's what I was going to talk yeah. about is, is he's... It, this isn't coming out of nowhere, right? Like, we're not just showing regional bias for a player that right, we believe in. Right. He's absolutely had that performance with that top 24 performance right. at CEO that I think he got eliminated by Smug, if yes. I recall correctly. Yeah. Uh, which is obviously Smug, a, a long-form uh, tournament vet. But I completely agree with you. Watching Nelbaum's growth uh, as someone who's been in New England the whole time... Mm -hmm. um, Definitely, you know, one of the breakouts of this this newer generation that really came up uh, in the area of Street Fighter V. Like, obviously, you know, Zaffirino and, and Kevin Tech had a lot of great uh, performances uh, locally and and traveled and really had that drive. And Burkish, yes. Let's not, let's not forget well, about so his, that's his what I was, seventeen run. So I was the you know I know Kevin Tech and Zaff from predating Street Fighter V. Obviously, yeah, yeah. Zaff uh, has come leaps and bounds more with with five, but. Burkish was, I think, one of the first of that new generation of player to really break out. Absolutely. And Nelbaum has absolutely followed behind on that and is uh, doing a, a really, really great job and still has that drive yeah. and is doing all this stuff. But what a bracket to be in to try to make that happen. You know, similarly, you, you, you allude to the top 96, but even just at a glance, like, let's say he makes it out, right? He gets past Kudo. Uh, the other half of that bracket... <laughs> NYC monstrous. Furby. It's monstrous. Like, NYC Furby, number one seed yeah. on that dangerous sim, and he still has that Falk too. Yeah, absolutely. It, but sim though. It, it's sim, right? So like the 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 um, so like like let's 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 keep it hometown. Let's keep it hometown versus hometown, right? Let's say hypothetically, Nell makes it past Kudo, and uh, and Furby does what he's supposed to do, and they make it in, in ninety six. Um, that's a tough match for Dawson. Mm. That's that's historically been a tough match for Dawson. But on the flip side, um, you can't deny the level of, of uh, experience that comes with uh, T. S. Saban. You of know course. What I'm so so you you can't for a, for a second. I pray to God that Nelbaum. I, I've talked to him. He he knows he's not supposed to get any type of like confidence until the end of the day. Mm. You know. So like, keep it humble. Um, I hope we laughed at the matchup. <laughs> we don't really have like a Dawson up, up, upstairs, so like, you know, he's. But the thing is, is that he's, he and I have traveled to New York, and he's run into to um, to Art a few times. Okay. And it's gone in Art's favor, but like, he's given me that look, like, man, that could have went my way. Yeah. And I'm just like. Listen, man, <laughs> go get your food, yeah. man. Like, go well, get so it. So we talked about this earlier, right? And, and we talked about, you know, uh, as someone who, again, has spent my whole fighting game tournament right. life and, and career rooted in New England and Boston, yeah. that first hurdle is always like, when do you really start to hang with the hardcore New York scene? Getting to that point where you can really hang in that circle yeah. is such a difficult hurdle to get past. But once you do, you know, so much feels like it opens up, at least as, as someone who is watching, yeah. right? Like as I'm watching, it's like there's the people who can hang and there's the people who haven't quite hit that point yet because the caliber of play that comes out of New York, uh, to no one's surprise, is just on another level to a lot of the communities in America or even the world. Yeah, the, that that's the... I think that's the beauty of Nelbaum, and we're definitely going to talk about the other players in, in a second. But like, um, the the beauty of Nelbaum is that he always keeps it humble when it comes to mm. instances where it's not just him chasing New York; it's him chasing his own success. Where in the sense that like he's not trying to be better than New York; he's just trying to be the best him. So I think that's going to take him way further than. Then you know, even if he beat Art, he knows mm. that the job's not done. Sure. So like he knows that it's all right. Saturday, we got to do the thing. You right. Know? So like, I I love where his mental game is. It's just again similar to um, to Deanthrax. He needs to yeah. he needs to execute. Yeah. You know. So he needs to stay out of his own way, and he has he has the he has the matchups in his favor. Like. Like Kudo runs um, Chun Li, I don't see that really being in Chun Li's favor in this game. Okay. Um, I haven't, admittedly, I haven't run run the matchup a lot, but like just doing the math in my head, I'm just like, how does she stay up with 
damage in that matchup. You know what I'm saying? Um, Kudo definitely came to 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 North America swinging hard. Sure. He uh, in his first events he w he was beating the likes of Idom and. And, and such online and offline. Mm -hmm. I know they had a long set, and I think he came out the victor on that. But but um, after that, he's run into the Space Boys of the world, mm -hmm. and um, I believe Zaf got the better of him at okay. an event. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But Kudo definitely has a little bit of growing himself to do. Okay. But he's no slouch. Um, Hizzle and Nice One. Hizzle is a Colleen player from Jersey. Again, he he makes his rounds. He's he's definitely somebody that, if Art isn't paying attention, could definitely get get V Trigger tooed on. Sure, it's always possible, but I just I I think about that matchup, and to me, just when I think about it off the top of my head, I I, I just I feel like Art is coming into that on paper. Uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty well equipped. And then there's something to be said that, like, you know, there's the different speeds that Art can play at. Right. right? Like, what does Colleen have if Dalsim really gets the momentum started? Like, she doesn't have a reversal to try to get him off. You, what, like, what do you want to do? You want to fish with, like, a, a V-Skill 1 in a certain spot and, and hope that you get through stuff? That's the that's the scary part of the neutral in that matchup, right? Because right. ne neither of them have a good wake up option, right? And both of them are looking to just <laughs> meet you to death, right? It's super snowballing, <laughs> yeah. And actually, I, I guess with with Colleen having the parry and Sim having TK teleport, they both have like really interesting interactions in the way that they deal with the throw pressure game, right? Because like Colleen throw pressure is intrinsically stronger because it beats her reversal mm -hmm. versus Sim, where like TK teleport is so anti throw right. that like it makes throw pressure feel intrinsically weaker because if you're wrong so much momentum swings away from you yeah it's just it, it has the makings for an interesting matchup to, it could to go bad through. so fast i'm sure and, it can and um and i think the 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 last the last seed that we haven't talked about um nice one i personally know him from the street fighter four days i don't know how much he's been playing in street fighter five mm. he's traditionally a guy player so he kept the archetype going with zeku okay we know zeku's a strong character he's been strong since he he got blessed in season four and he hasn't looked back yet and a, a fundamental a fundamentally based character uh player like like nice one definitely takes advantage of all the tricks see like i I feel like since season four, we've all talked about how strong Zeku is. Right. They blessed him with that good low forward. He's and from that moment on, like I remember, season four dropped. People were like Zeku is the best character in the game. I don't understand. I never subscribed to subscribe See, to that. Sure, but like so many people speak understand. to that. So many people speak to the strength of Zeku, and he's only gotten stronger since that moment. They've right. given him so many buffs, but I feel like no one has really brought that character, other than, like, Infectious, uh, mm. has really taken that character and shown, like, hey, it's not all talk, it's not all theory crafting. Nah, hold up, hold up. Angry Bird, though. Angry okay, Bird, okay. Did sure, it so there are people, like, there are people. But that's that's still only two people out right. of seven billion versus people. when you talk about the strongest <laughs> character in the game, yeah. Yeah. usually that's associated with a lot of people placing with that character. And there's something to be said that, like, yeah, Zeku's incredibly strong, but being a two-form character, you're micromanaging your state, right. there's a whole different degree of interaction that makes it stronger. Yeah, fine, on the one hand. On the other hand, Sea Viper had the hardest execution in Street Fighter Four, but when she was the best character in AE, you still saw her everywhere. Yeah. And that was in a version where the twins were, and Fei Long, were also incredibly strong and far simpler execution characters. Mm -hmm. But you still saw Sea Viper. So mm -hmm. for how long Zeku's been in the game, and how long he's been strong, just saying he's hard to play, I don't feel justifies his lack of presence uh, across the uh, high-level placements of this game. So you begin to wonder, is he really strong, but with bad matchups with other strong characters, or is he overhyped because he has great skills on paper, or great tools on paper, but just doesn't really deliver when it comes to the, it uh, always seems, the big stage? It always seems like the player doesn't match the character, sure. or the character doesn't match the player. Like, they never seem like they're both this, like, uh, they're both enough, except for the two players that we mentioned yeah. earlier that can, like, take the character to yeah. light. Yeah, and so lots of players are going to say their character's difficult and needs good tools. Like Karen. Like Karen. Um, 
but nobody cares because we are moving on to our next pool. Not enough time to dwell on the past because the future is still in the cards. So tell me guys about the next one we got going on here. All right. We'll see. We're going to start off rip top seed pool C mono. Everybody watched CEO. Everybody saw that crazy top eight. I'm biased as hell in this pool. I'm letting you know right now. But for I mean, your crowd's with you too. Like, no, no, no. He's not. I don't think. No, he's... no. I can curse. Literally. Yo, get your stuff off. Get your stuff off because I'm gonna go crazy. I know you're gonna. But so mono obviously had that huge performance. Uh, beat so many great players in order to do so. Crazy performance against nephew. Crazy performance against punk in winners and grands. Uh, Joe Ume Rogan, who going into the top eight, having seen uh, top 96 and top 24, I was going into it a Joe Ume Rogan believer, said Joe Ume, uh, Joe Ume Rogan down into losers too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Down 0-2, down by the way, in that matchup. Yeah. And, and uh, that. So the on-paper favorite to come out in winners on one half of this pool. I'll get to the other thing that I find interesting about Mono should Mono come out in winners from here, there's a much longer term thing that uh, I'm excited about. But go ahead and, and spout your stuff, because I know you want who you want to talk about. Well, first off, I do want to talk about Mono. Puerto Rico, I love you. Um, Mono, I think, is definitely somebody you have to watch out for yeah. no matter what. Based on the, the level of player and the type of character he is bringing. Every single time. you, No one... No one on this planet knows a Feng matchup, I promise you. Oh, God. No. Every, everybody is just trying trying to, to, to hold on for dear life and pray that they don't get super-duper poisoned. And it happens. Shout-outs, Punk. Anyway, but what I really, really want to talk to you about is my guy, my rival, my friend, Tega. I think, honestly, this pool is... He's going he's gonna to be upset. The reason why he's going to be upset is that he's going to have to spend so much time playing Street Fighter V. Because he's been grinding Grand Blue mm. and KOF 15. He does not care about Street Fighter V. But he's... I promise you, bro. He's making it out of this pool of winners. Based on pure fundamentals and the fact that he literally only has two players that he has to deal with. And those two players are not beating him. He has to deal with Stupendous Geef and KB. I'm, sure. If KB's playing Birdie still, done. Forget it. He's out. He's not out neutraling the likes of, of Tega. I promise you. Yeah, I mean, certainly not with this version of Birdie. No, this this version of Birdie is not it. And then, like, Geef is not in a great come on. space. Yeah, and plus those those two have to play each other to play Tega, Stupendous, and 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 KB. Right. So, it's not looking favorable for either one of them. I mean, it's looking more favorable for, for KB. That matchup's horrible for, for Geef. But, um, still, like, I don't see how Tega, Tega doesn't win this, and then he winds up having to play against... Mono in top 96, which... The, no, 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 no. Stop, stop. The CEO 2021 champion. Yeah. Mono PR from Puerto Rico. Yep, on the the low tier hero Fang. Mm -hmm. Coming out smoking everybody. What do you come for that matchup? Nice. Uh, that was Cola and I. Mm. Man, that must have been so cool. It was an amazing performance. Mono blew me away. I I went into that top eight very impressed with Joe Humerogan's performance. That was my sleep. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's no, cool. Mono smoked everybody. That's cool. But so get to top 96 on Saturday, right? Let's say you're right and Tega gets through. Mm -hmm. What does he do about Fang? What does he do in a game that is not Tega's main concern against a character who is requires an awful lot of situational awareness and very specific answers? You worry about it then, obviously. First, you've got to get through your pools, but... I'm not worried. You start to think, oh, you're not worried. I'm not worried. Well, it's a good thing you're not in the pool itself, Blanche. I'm going to tell you why I'm not worried. Okay. Because Mono's going to raise hell on that boy. 
can just wash him, and he's gonna go back to playing Grand Blue. Oh, and okay. Kayla. So you're not worried because it's worried. fun. I'm not worried. It, it it's everything I love to see. I love to see Tega lose. <laughs> I haven't watched it take a loose since 2014. Life is great. I wasn't prepared for that answer. I think we're done with that pool. Yeah, I think we can move on to pool I think D. We're... Jeez. Uh, pool D is kind of stacked. Oh, obvious. my God. Obvious. Said it. No, why? You know why. Oh, that was, on, that was not on purpose. Oh, okay. That was not on purpose. Keep going. Uh, IDOM. CPT champion IDOM. Uh, from where? From New York. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, we get it. You know, earlier when I said New York has a high level of competition, mm -hmm. you could have taken that. You didn't need me to keep doing it. Oh, okay. uh, obvious favorite to go far in any tournament that they enter. Uh, deadly Laura, Deadly Poison. Mm. No matter what they do to that character, that character just continues to exist. No, 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 that player continues to exceed sure. levels of expectations. But it's not... like. With respect to Poison, yeah. it's not like Idom is the only Poison player still performing. Certainly the one performing at the highest degree, and that is a testament to the player. But we have watched, particularly in the online space, there's no shortage of other Poison players that are doing good work, too. Those Poisons don't matter. They don't matter in this bracket. There's Idom only does. one other Poison that I'm worried about when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, and we have yet to see... Our, our Asian brethren of the fighting game community come over to North America and show us. I'm talking about Fudo. Fudo poison. That's the only poison that I'm worried about after, after Idom. Other right. than that. Fair enough. Get, get that Flux Waves mess out of here. Okay. Get I that. mean, Flux Waves is only the most winningest CASA online champion. Get that Flux Waves nonsense out Still of here. Still getting dubs in Incendium. Get that Mylin nonsense. Yo, fake item. Get that okay. nonsense out anyway, of here. Anyway, uh, the, the number two seed, if I'm reading this bracket properly, in the pool prototype. Okay. Uh, is he still playing Alex? I hope so. I Alex believe is incredible. so. Alex, is, Alex converted me this season. I'm having a lot of fun playing Alex yeah. this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which already makes this like, this is a grappler heavy uh, uh, pool. Uh, there's also Ludovic and Wash Your Hands. No, alright, so listen. I have zero expectation for, for Lud this, uh, this, this tournament. As, when it comes to Street Fighter Five, he mm. is admittedly not paying attention to Street Fighter V in any sense. Um, I haven't personally played him, but I know that he is just 100% focused on other games like King of Fighters XV. Mm. Uh, one, one of his original games where he comes from. So, I'm not even... Listen, I almost, un, I almost didn't see him. A lot of people gave me flack for it. Okay. I understand. We're airing the stuff. Because if you if you let Lud run loose, he might have a day. And I understood, so I left him. Yeah, well, Wash Your Hands is definitely planned. Definitely. Wash Your Hands is going to wash some Lud. It'll, I'm going to be curious to watch that one. That is, a, that is a strong statement. So I believe in it. I, I don't necessarily disagree. And, and you know, I've, I've certainly seen more of Wash Your Hands than Lud. In uh, in the online space of late, have you played against a Cody in this matchup? In the, in this in this patch, uh, I've played against your Cody in this patch. No, no. I haven't played against a real Cody. No, <laughs> my Cody is not real. That yes, my Cody okay. is not real. On this we agree. But the point is, no, Cody is Cody is very strong right now. But I don't know. I will be curious to see what Idom picks in to wash your hands, assuming that that ends up the path. Uh, to get out of this It'll be pool. Poison. I feel like... I mean, I don't think Cody does great against Poison, because I don't know how many characters necessarily do great against Poison, but I think Cody can do okay. I think I think Cody now, because his damage is extraordinarily high, he could perhaps catch Poison lacking. Um, I know EX Tornado trades aren't bad. I know Crime Sway... Uh, has some application in the matchup. Not so much those implement implementations, but um, the the her herbox adjustments also on true. poison 
are going to play a huge role in how mm -hmm. trades go in that match. Yeah, right? I mean, sure. So, like, um, Crouch Fierce from Poison mm. is now on notice um, at any given rate. We know that Wash Your Hands is going to be perpetually holding level 2 EX up. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> we're... We're what else? What else are you gonna do? <laughs> that dangerous game of, of of literally just watching out for stand medium punch, uh, stand medium punch, stand light kick, uh, crouch medium punch, stand medium kick. The the most underrated it's button so in that Street so Fighter good. Five history. I've never. I don't know that that's still true. I feel like people are coming around on like recognizing it. No, no, no. People are recognizing. First of all, Cody has flown under the radar since his inception. I've been trying to tell people that this character is kind of crazy since season three. People don't want to believe me. Fine. Now y'all get y'all getting the y'all getting the taste of some downplaying right now. So um, it's gonna be interesting how seeing how uh, Idom deals with winter semifinals against Washing Hands because that that's gonna happen. That's that's your call for it. For well, it. then that's another matchup that I hope that we. Assuming that it happens that way. Oh, that's going to be on stream, trust me. Okay. So, that leaves only one pool left then for Friday's set, Pool E. So, when it all comes down to the end of the day, it's late Friday night, players may or may not have... Nephew dance slip. All right. That's so, it. So, sure, like, fine. Here's the thing that I find interesting. Okay. I, look, I look up the top 96, and I'm like, oh, I saw Nephew and Mono... We're going into a similar part of the bracket. And I was like, huh, that was a crazy CEO match when they played against each other. If Nephew and Mono make it into top 96 and continue forward in winners, they play in top 16. If they both stay in winners, now, that's a big if, right? What you, like, we're seeing in a couple of these pools, there's, like, some guarantees that are playing against each other hella early. There's the possibility of some crazy top 96 matches mm -hmm. and anyone can upset anybody none of this is a short thing but if they do both stay the course in winners they play each other in top 16 for winners top 8 and I will love to watch that matchup again because nephew is so good at that slower methodical style and it's actually what smoked him at CEO because that poison just stacked and that extra damage just piled up and he got out lamed. And I hate to bring this up, but we are not dealing with the same Colleen. Nope. <laughs> we are not dealing with the same Colleen in any sense. She is definitely weaker in this patch. I would love to see how Nephew has made the adjustments to continue to be a top player. Yeah. I this, this is his event. Sorry, this is his event to show that he belongs at that top echelon now that his character has been brought down to size. Yeah, it's it's definitely going to be interesting. I am going to be keeping an eye on Nephew's matches, and that is the one, that is specifically the matchup that I have looked forward the farthest to sort of suss out. And we're very likely to see other, you know, CEO, top 16, top 8, runbacks because a lot of those players are here in this bracket but that was just the one that i put together at first glance and i was like "Ooh." i got a question for you though what i'm pretty sure nephew has been practicing luke pretty sure i saw him pick luke at cpt west also got nerfed by the way i mean he like technically i ain't gonna touch it I ain't gonna touch it. That's gonna lead... To, so, I don't know that I will have ever seen Luke Fang, right? No. And... I can assure get you... Get this out of the way, off rip, Luke incredibly strong, very few weaknesses, super busted character, by Street Fighter Six. we get it. But, I think about implications of things in the matchup. It is a weird character matchup that likely neither one of them... I mean... Mono is far more likely to have played that matchup than Nephew is, especially against <laughs> yeah. someone of that caliber. Yeah. yeah. And I think about the fact that so much of what Fang likes to do 
is you lay these very deliberate spacing traps with your fireball patterns and stuff. And Luke is a character that really encourages you to hit buttons at a range that is a little bit farther away than you would feel generates threats because Luke yeah. lunges forward with these limbs. Yeah. So is Mono comfortable enough with the spacing in the matchup to be laying these traps at the right spot where Nephew is going to hit standing strong and lunge into the poison trap. So Not familiar with the spacing on his own. So this conversation is potentially Saturday or even Sunday. Sure, we're point. getting deep in the weeds so, on this now. Yeah, I think I think this pool is so free for the two that I, I screamed out earlier that this it's not even a conversation. So now now we're talking about how 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 nephew who's in the pool that we're trying to discuss deals with s such a character that he probably has no familiarity with has been run run over by this character and could possibly have to deal with his character not being the strength that he remembers it at. But again, that's that's deep in the weeds. That's a top 16 looking match that's that's not even necessarily uh no that is a saturday match top 24 yeah. to top eight is happening on saturday so that top eight happens yes, on sunday so that's something that you know we won't know until the end of friday whether that is still in the cards but if i'm writing out what my ideal bracket if i'm picking out some matches that i would love to see that's one of them yeah. and i think if you look at the on paper favorites of some of these pools uh at the very least come the end of friday i think that can definitely still be in play so final thoughts on day one combo breaker 2022 don't miss out it's gonna be great and we didn't even talk about all the pools yeah we we talked about like maybe a third of everything that's going on there's there's so many other it's it's, it's, gonna, it's insane it's gonna be a bloodbath and it's not even all the pools. There's more pools on Saturday. Thank you, Brad and Bunch, for going over all the day one pools. We'll be sure to be back tomorrow with the conclusions and the look forwards once again for day two, Combo Breaker 2022. You guys aren't going to want to miss out. Be sure to check out all the socials and follow them on Twitch.television. We'll see you next time.